Welcome back. In this video, we're visiting the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGN, a small but crucial component of the thalamus that plays a central role in perception. Let's start with a quick recap. Remember the retina, that light sensitive layer at the back of your eye? The axons of the retinal ganglion cells form the optic nerve, which carries visual information from the retina to the brain. These axons reach a crossroads called the optic chiasm. Now here's where it gets interesting. If the axons originate from the temporal side of the retina, they stay on the same side of the brain. But if they come from the nasal side of the retina, they cross over to the opposite side. And where do they all end up? You guessed it, our friend the lateral geniculate nucleus. The LGN is nestled within the thalamus, deep in the brain. It's a part of the diencephalon, and it's lateral, meaning it's away from the midline. The label geniculate comes from the Latin word genu, meaning knee. It was named because it was thought to resemble a knee. If we could take a cross-section of your LGN, we'd see six distinct layers of cells. These layers are like the different channels on your TV, each one carrying a different type of visual information. The inputs to the LGN are separated by eye. Each eye sends axons to both sides of the brain. For instance, the right eye sends axons from the right nasal retina to the left LGN and the right temporal retina to the right LGN. The same applies to the left eye. When these axons reach the LGN, they project to different layers. For the right LGN, the layers that receive input from the right eye are layers two, three, and five. The layers that receive input from the left eye are layers one, four, and six. But wait, there's more. There's another level of segregation based on the type of retinal ganglion cell. We talked about the different cone and rod receptors. We talked about lateral inhibition and receptive fields of bipolar and ganglion neurons. There's a whole lot of pre-processing done right in the retina. There are two main types of ganglion neurons, the P types, which are smaller and slower, and the M types, which are larger and faster. The P types are like the detectives of the visual world, picking up on fine details and shapes. You can probably guess which type of receptor they connect to, rods or cones. The M types, on the other hand, are more like the athletes, quickly detecting movement. These two types of cells project to different layers of the LGN. The P type cells only project to the parvocellular layers of the LGN, while the M types project to the magnocellular layers. The magnocellular layers are layers one and two, and the parvocellular layers are layers three, four, five, and six. And just to keep things interesting, there's a third type of retinal ganglion cell, the non-M, non-P cells. These little guys project to the coniocellular layers, which are the layers in between the numbered layers. Now let's talk about binocular vision. The LGN plays a crucial role in combining the visual information from both eyes. This is because the LGN receives inputs from both eyes and organizes and processes them together. This binocular processing allows us to perceive depth and see the world in three dimensions. But the LGN doesn't stop there. It's also involved in visual attention and awareness. It helps us focus on what's important and ignore the rest. This is because the LGN can enhance the signals of important visual information and suppress the signals of less important information. There's that lateral inhibition process again. Interestingly, most of the fibers coming into the LGN are not from the retina, but are feedback from the cortex. This feedback allows the cortex to influence what information the LGN sends to it, essentially telling the LGN what to pay attention to. Understanding the LGN and its function 
has been key for us understanding and potentially treating visual disorders. For instance, damage to the LGN can lead to visual field defects where parts of the visual field are lost. This is because the LGN is a relay station for visual information. So if it's damaged, the information can't get through. Lastly, there is ongoing research into the role of the LGN in conditions like dyslexia. In dyslexia, there may be abnormalities in the magnocellular pathway, the M pathway, which includes the LGN, leading to difficulties in visual processing. Understanding these associations between the LGN and various visual disorders can provide valuable insights into potential treatment strategies. For instance, therapies that target the LGN or its connections could potentially be used to treat these conditions. However, more research is definitely needed to fully understand these relationships and develop effective treatments. So there you have it. The LGN might be small, but it's a key player in our visual system, helping us see the world and all its complexity and beauty. In our next video, we'll continue our journey through the visual pathway, exploring the wonders of the visual cortex. So stay curious and remember there's always more to see. See you in the next video.